In the second part of setting up the full flow sheet, we are going to use the cycle organizer in Aspen Absorption to define the cycle of operation. The cycle for our process has four stages. In the first stage, bed 1 is absorbing and part of its product is going to be used in regeneration of bed 2. In stage 3, we have bed 2 absorbing and bed 1 regenerating. Stages 2 and 4 have the depressurization and repressurization of the beds. We're using an interacting unit to store information from the absorption stage in bed 1 and replay it in stage 3 for bed 2 when this bed is regenerating. We're going to look at the features in the cycle organizer to define the full cycle of operation. We are now going to create the cycle of operation by using the cycle organizer. Cycle Organizer can be found in the Tools menu, Cycle Organizer. That places the Cycle Organizer icon in the flow sheet and open its configuration form. We can define several cycles here. We're just going to define one in this case. And this cycle is going to have four steps. Absorption, depressurization, repressurization, and desorption. So for step number one, we should give a description. And this is going to be a time-driven step, taking 60 seconds. We can also have an event-driven step where we compare values for variables, but more commonly, we use an explicit end time for the steps. So now that we've defined the way the step is going to finish, we're going to add manipulated variables to it. Here we create a table where we're going to include several variables. The way we include variables is by adding variables from the flow sheet. So we have a variable selector here where we can start inputting a string with a variable name. So I'm going to select dp stage start. And then I can do the same for the other variables. As you can see when the table is created, I can enter a value here. I can change the units. I can also choose to ramp a value of a flow, for instance and then I'll have to give it the target final value and the time for the ramp. It is important in step one that you have exactly the same specifications as you've entered in the flow sheet. This is your initial condition. This is how you want the run to start. And since I entered the values already for the initial condition in the flow sheet, those values are copied over here and I don't have to make any changes. I'm going to create a second step now by using add insert step. I want to insert it after step one. And now notice that I can copy the data that I have in step one. This saves me from having to search for all the variables again to create the table. So if I click yes, I'm now in step two and I have all the variables defined there. Step two is the counter current blowdown. So I'm going to give it that description. It is useful to give a description here because the names of the steps will appear in the simulation messages where the program runs so we know what's going on during the run. So let's look at the control. In this case, this step is event driven. And what we want to do is terminate the step when the pressure in the bottom tank void, TD1, is less or equal to 1.1 bar. So I want an event driven step. And I want to find TD1 pressure. And I want it to be less or equal to 1.1 bar. And now I want to make the following changes. So the changes in values I'm going to do here will happen as soon as this step starts. I want to close valve VD1. I want to close the feed valve. I want to close the product valve. And I want to open the waste valve with an active specification of 2, which is the CV. I need to find the waste valve CV, add it here, give it a value of 6E minus 6. Now I'm going to define the other steps in a similar manner. So let's look at step 3, inserting step 3 after step 2, copying the data. This is going to be the purge step. 
this step is going to par be part of the interaction because we're going to replay the information back into the column block. So we're going to ignore the step control section for now. But we want to change the valve CV to 1E minus 5. Finally, we're going to add the last step, step 4. Again, copying information. And here we're going to repressurize with feed. This step is going to depend on step number 2. And in this step, we want the feed valve to have an active specification of 2. We have to find its CV. We're going to use a CV value of 1.4 e minus 5. Lastly, we have to define the interactions. So we have a forward interaction between steps 1 and 3. The interactions are defined from the step button, interactions. We're going to double click step 1, interaction D1, and we're going to select step 3 to interact with. And you see automatically step 3 has been filled in here. We have defined all the steps for the cycle and now we need to define some options in the cycle. We want to run for a number of 15 cycles. Now that we have created the cycle, we're going to have to generate the task. So we click on the cycle button, select generate task. You can see the icons changing down here and a task has been created that is now active. So when I press run to run the simulation, it will execute the task. Before we run the simulation, it's important to note that now the cycle organizer task is going to control the simulation. So we no longer have to set an end time. So we can go to the run menu, select pause at, and unselect the pause at time to let it run indefinitely. And we're going to let the task control all the changes in the values during the dynamic run and finish executing the simulation after 15 cycles.